Hello, it is April 15th, 2020. Today I was reading in the book of Titus, and quite a number of passages from the book stuck out to me as I was looking through the book of Titus. I noticed that Titus deals mainly with the thought of a Christian's doctrine and a Christian's lifestyle, that those two go to hand in hand, they go together. Oftentimes, when we think of Christianity, we think exclusively on the side of doctrine. We think of such things as a person who accepts uh, the incarnation of Christ, that Christ came and lived on the earth, the deity of Christ, that Christ is God or claimed to be God, and we accept that as truth. Uh, His resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, his coming back again. We believe such doctrines as the Trinity. And of course, the creation of the world by God and and on and on. And I'm not going to name and list every single one of the fundamental doctrines today. But we think of doctrine, we think of those teachings, sometimes abstract, sometimes more concrete. But in the book of Titus, Paul begins to talk not just about doctrine and the importance of doctrine, but of the importance of a Christian's lifestyle coupled with his doctrine. And I want to read a couple of passages through here and just kind of show how that those two go hand in hand. For the Christian, there are certain doctrines that we should uh, manifest, we should declare, we should hold to, and that we should make known, we should profess those. But then there's another aspect to Christianity that goes into the aspect of behavior or lifestyle that is a certain one that we ought to have as well. In Titus chapter number one, Paul is speaking to Titus, a young man whom he had left in Crete to be a minister there and also to train and teach other ministers as well. And he writes in Titus chapter number one, in verse number 15, unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. And we know folks, I'm sure, that fall on either side of those. Those who show forth a purity and innocence and in everything that they seem to say or do, there's a level of purity and innocence that at times may seem even quaint or humorous, but it exists because of their purity. And in their mind, things are pure and holy and just. But then there's another side or another uh, type of person we may see or whom we know or speak with or uh, be in contact with who nothing at all is pure. Seems like everything they say, everything they do, everything they present comes from a standpoint of impurity and ungodliness. But Paul goes on to say in verse number 16 of chapter one, they profess that they know God. Okay, there's that profession. They may even talk a good talk and say things that line up with Christian doctrine and Christian belief. But he goes on to say, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. The next verse continues this thought here, it being chapter number two, verse one, but speak though thou the things which become sound doctrine. The word become there in that verse number two simply means to be fit to or to be accompanied with or that which goes along with. So what Paul is telling Titus here is along with teaching sound doctrine, Titus needs to teach as a pastor those things which go along with sound doctrine, those things which are fit for sound doctrine. Now we're going to read, I'm going to read a little bit here and show you what he gives as some of those things that go with sound doctrine. And notice, they're all about the lifestyle that a Christian is supposed to live. Chapter 2, verse 1, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, there's a whole list of things there that Paul says that Titus is supposed to be teaching along with, or that which becomes, or that which goes with sound doctrine, and every one of those is the way in which we are supposed to live. When our lifestyle does not measure up to the doctrine that we say that we believe, 
we are given to giving to others a reason to blaspheme the word of God. That's what it goes on to say in verse number five, that the word of God be not blasphemed. When our lifestyle falls less than what it is we claim to believe, we are giving other people the opportunity to make light of and even blaspheme God's word. That was one of the things that David's prophet told him when David had sinned with Bathsheba. When David, who was the king of Israel, took another man's wife, committed adultery with her, and then to hide his sin, had his had her, uh, her husband killed in battle, one of the things that the prophet of God told David was, by this, you have given the enemies of the Lord a great opportunity or a great occasion to blaspheme the Lord. And as Christians, when we fall short of what God wants for us to do, we are given to the, giving to those who do not believe, those who are defiled, and those who look at things in that way in which it says in verse number, uh, verse number sixteen of chapter one, uh, those that that know God say they know God but deny Him in works. Uh, those that in verse number fifteen who it says to, uh, to the defiled and unbelieved, nothing are pure. We are giving them a reason or an opportunity to speak evil of Christianity and speak evil of the Lord. Our lifestyle needs to match our doctrine. Doctrine or belief or profession of doctrine or belief are not the entirety of the Christian life. Lifestyle and the way we live needs to reflect what it is we say we believe. He goes on to list other things. Uh, he says in verse number six, young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. And that's really the, that's really the goal here to have a lifestyle that is such that no evil thing can rightfully be said against what it is we do. That does not mean we are men pleasers trying to please everybody and make everybody like Christianity. It means that we are God pleasers doing those things which please the Lord so that others, though they may speak evil of Christianity, cannot find something in our life to speak evil of. As I read about that, I'm reminded of Daniel, a young man who lived in a foreign country, taken away from his own uh, native people by way of slavery, who found himself in a position where he was being, his lifestyle was being investigated by those who hated him. A Jewish man, Jewish, a Jewish man who loved God and tried to follow the law, had enemies who wanted to find something wrong in his life. And they said this, if we are going to find anything wrong in Daniel's life, we are going to have to find it in what he does in his worship to the Lord, because we can find no fault in him. Now, Daniel was a sinner, sinner, I'm sure, as the Bible teaches us, that we are all sinners. But as far as his lifestyle was concerned, those who were the enemies of God could find nothing by which to accuse him. In our, uh, in our, in our, in our passage, as we read through, we are reminded that the reason why we want to live that way is because God has given so much for us and he has given Jesus Christ to us. He has justified us. He has saved us. And therefore, we, out of gratitude and love for the Lord, ought to live that way. In chapter number three, he reminds us of this very thing. Verse number eight, this is a faithful saying that these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So as we consider our Christian life, let us remember that doctrine and works or lifestyle go hand in hand. They are not to be separate entities where we have a good lifestyle, but we have the wrong biblical doctrines or where we have or profess good biblical doctrine, but as the Bible says, we profess to know God, but in our works, we act as though we do not even know God. May God bless you, and I look forward to the day that we can see each other again very soon.